Hello there, my fellow Old World Explorers, and welcome back to more Warhammer Fantasy lore. Today we shall resume our adventures in the misty island of Albion, talk about the land itself, the geography, the inhabitants, and its warriors. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Albion is an enchanted land, and it doesn't take being a wizard to observe that. Ancient powers move there, and there is powerful magic in the very air that you brave. The Ogham Circles, the Great Stones, attract an enormous amount of dark magical power, and somehow they make it harmless. Maybe that was true in the past though, but it is suspected that now they are failing. All spells eventually wear out, all devices reach the end of their usefulness sooner or later. They may still attract dark magic, but their ability to store it or purify it has been diminished or lost entirely. Due to that, by absorbing much of the chaos energy, Albion's own soil began to warp, and what was once fertile quickly became immense quagmire. The powerful raw energy of chaos that the land of Albion had absorbed created extremely unstable weather conditions. Albion is constantly battered by heavy rain and violent gales, which have turned the land into an infertile morass, except for the most resilient of plants. The rumble of thunder has become part of the landscape, and torrential rain will hit the face of anyone who walks the land. Many are afraid of entering those once beautiful plains, and many of those who try are never seen again. Not even the creatures of Albion were able to escape the effects of the mutation caused by chaos, and shortly afterwards, the shamans of the tribes were already telling tales about the terrible monsters prowling the darkest corners and appeared at night. Although Albion possesses relatively flat terrain, the coastline is riddled with large white cliffs, which surround the island and rise into the sky. The waters around Albion teem with a variety of terrible sea monsters, some of which are capable of dragging the heaviest of galleons into a watery grave. The coves suitable for landing are very few, and they tend to have turbulent waters agitated by storms, so they are difficult to find and almost impossible to disembark in them. Menacing jagged rocks emerge from the water, but the greatest dangers are the rocks that you don't see hidden under the waves. These are capable of gutting a ship as easily as a dwarf guts a goblin. The interior of Albion is, for the most part, a swampy, wet and cold land. Because the island is shrouded in a persistent fog which barely penetrates the sun and the frequent rains and the storms, the interior is a flooded region where only a few stunted crops may grow. But despite everything, the landscape is not without beauty. Sometimes you can catch glimpses of undulating pointed hills on the slopes of which streams descend. Through the extensive marshes and swamps, you can see twisted trees rising out of the murky waters, presenting a threatening appearance, more like twisted evil giants than plants. And sometimes you can see out of the corner of your eye more than one skeleton of some poor unfortunate soul half buried in the ground. Due to the shallow waters of the swamps, the natives of Albion travel in shallow draft barges, using long poles to propel the boat into the water. There are few firm roads, and of those that do exist, many have uneven ground, which sinks under the very feet of those who walk them. Among the natives, it is said that the souls of those who die in the swamps are trapped in the muddy depths without being able to escape. Traveling through the marshes is very dangerous, not only because of the risk of drowning in the waters, but also because of the many creatures that inhabit it. The suffocating white mist enveloping Albion not only hinders vision, but also seems to kill the sounds. Many are the strange dangers here. The devils of the bog, the beasts of the swamp, the walking dead. In these lands, all kinds of curses reside. For that reason, the people of Albion never take a trip into the swamp lightly. And that is also the reason why farewells have a funereal tone, since no one knows if or when the travelers will make it back to their home. In the interior of Albion, there is a cluster of mountains. 
The heights of these are raised by the low clouds and obscured by constant rain and storm, and for that reason the altitude is unknown. In the higher parts, the wind is icy, snow stays on the ground, and vegetation is scarce. On the slopes there are pine forests, which undulate almost to the edge of the lakes. The Great Stone Circles, focuses of magical power and energy, as well as other legacies of the Old Ones, are everywhere. Ruined settlements, haunted towers, strange labyrinths open to the sky with walls covered in carved mystical runes. Some of these places are guarded by corrupted giants, others by stranger creatures still, like hippogriffs, manticores, and other demonic entities. The island of Albion is mainly populated by humans, who have lived there for millennia back when the Old Ones created the race of man. Albion also boasts a great number of giants, and in fact this swampy island boasts the world's biggest population of these creatures. Another race that is abundant are the Greenskins. They arrived on the island centuries ago, but they reproduce quickly and now they pose a threat to everyone and everything. The misty island of Albion has seen as much bloodshed and warfare as the rest of the old world. Albion is seen as a damp, bog-ridden backwater, and reports of recent incursions have concentrated on the clashes between the supposedly more advanced invaders. However, a closer examination of the past campaigns in Albion show that its native armies are every bit as lethal as those of the invaders. The core of an Albion army comprises nobles in chariots and warbands of warriors on foot, screened by young slingers armed with slings and javelins, which are in turn led by local chieftains. The poorer nobles are mounted on hardy native ponies and form the cavalry used to scout and to support the chariot warriors. Albion is also famous for its great wolfhound's breed. In times of war, these wolfhounds are gathered in large packs and used to supplement the cavalry, screening attacks and harassing vulnerable enemy flanks. Some chieftains can also call upon giant eagles whose eyries dot the highest peaks of the land. Very few chieftains will pass on the chance to recruit some of the mightiest inhabitants of the island, the famous giants. Just like the giants at the company orc and goblin armies far to the south, these massive warriors make up in brawn what they lack in brain. In addition to the chieftains who lead the armies, there are also heroes to help marshal the army and enigmatic druids, who are not only the army's wizards, but its lawmakers and judges. Last but not least, we have the so-called Maiden Guard, a spear-wielding sisterhood of warrior women. These protect the oracles of Albion, female druids with the gift of prophecy. It can be rare to encounter one of the reclusive truthsayers of Albion, for they are naturally suspicious of all that walks on two legs. Being masters of natural magic, truthsayers are able to shapeshift into beasts of all sizes. Thus do they avoid unwelcome company by evasion in the form of a hawk or by bloodshed in the form of a bear. Yet if the truthsayers themselves are seldom encountered, the same cannot be said about their domains, which are scattered all through the wilderness. In such remote places, even the lowest beasts show glimmering of intelligence, and the vegetation grows wilder, stronger, and hungrier than it should. When a storm of magic occurs, the truthsayers steal away from their hillside hermitages and seek out allies. Only with help they can hope to marshal enough magical power to undo the spells of shrouding that conceal their homeland. Driven by this desperation, many a truthsayer has found himself battling alongside unsavory allies, harnessing his mastery of the green wind of magic to a destructive cause. The goal on these occasions is to work a greater good by committing a small evil, but with every step along the path, the reclamation of their home becomes an even more distant dream. Only a truthsayer of purest heart has any hope of annulling the Shroud of Mist, and in such matters, there can be no thing such as a minor taint. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the misshrouded and little-known realm known as Albion for today. Definitely one of the most unique and less explored regions of the old world, both in-universe and canon-wise. 
But hey, at least we get some in-depth lore about it. Unlike some other regions, Kaf Kaf, Ind and Nippon. What about you though? What are your thoughts on the inhabitants and warriors of Albion? Did you know any other bits of lore that I didn't mention today? Do share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have an awesome and healthy day. Sigmar's blessings be upon you.